Welcome back on Joy News Desk. Now, in our first story, the General Secretary of the Fulani community in Ghana, Barry Yakubu Musa, has called on the powers that be to do more to protect the lives of Fulanis in Ghana, just like any other citizens. He says he is surprised that after 24 hours, the Ghana Police Service is yet to issue a statement on the shooting incident in Zakwali. He said this when he engaged with three Fulani communities who are attacked in the Zakwali area. Speaking at Zakwali after engaging the Fulani communities which were attacked by unknown assailants, Mr. Barry recounted several attacks he said were made to Fulanis in various parts of the country. Far back in 2011 in Karaga, yeah. about 13 lives were 40, lost 40. of Fulanis. 2012 in Gulumpi, about 25 lives of Fulani were killed. Were lost. Then also come at Damango in the Savannah region. Then come again at Jema in the Kintampo municipal. In Potin in the central region, a rape case, if you could remember last year, it raised alarm. A whole machinery of the Ghana police moved to Potin to raise down Fulani community down. About seven houses were burned down. Fulanis were arrested. He said there are bad nuts in every tribe and wondered why one single brush is used to paint all Fulanis when there are robbery attacks in Ghana. It's an unfortunate thing that is happening for we the Fulanis. Today the evidence is here for you to see. It is appalling and unacceptable. We have been pleading with the powers that be to do more to protect the Fulani lives. At least our life is also important, just like other lives. We wonder why, till now, the Ghana Police Service has not made a statement, giving up a statement on this serious security issue, we are appealing to the president, who happens to be the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, who happens to be the chairman of the ECOWAS. We all believe the heads of the ECOWAS. Today, as we speak, we have three presidents who are Fulanis. We want to hear the president speak. And we are pleading to the Security Council, especially the chairman, the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who happens to be our in-law. He shouldn't forget. These same people who lost their life, they voted them to power. So the amount that they are losing, they should know that they are losing power. So we are pleading to the vice president, as the chairman of the Council of Security, the police force should turn his eyes to see his, his accountants. The youth organizer of the Fulani group in Ghana, Ahmed Bari, cautioned that if nothing is done to stop these attacks, they would advise themselves. A crime that is being committed elsewhere, must it be like the software should be Fulanis? You haven't seen whoever has killed somebody or any atrocities happening somewhere. You put it on Fulanis. We are putting this straight to the national security and then the government. The government should stand up and come to our aid, or else we will advise ourselves. What is happening to the Fulani community is uncalled for. Eight lives lost just yesterday. Some were burnt, roasted. Can you imagine? Are we animals? Excuse my language. We are very, very angry. We, the Fulani youth, will not stand for this to continue happening to us. Well, from those very sad developments, uh, let's focus on Easter. And any long-distance commercial bus leaving Accra to any part of the country will have someone acting as a spokesperson throughout the journey. His job will, among other things, prompt the driver of indiscipline uh, conduct in the course of the journey 
and report to the nearest police for quick responses to avert preventable road accidents. Now, launching the initiative at the VIP bus terminal, Director General of Police uh, Public Relations, DCOP Kwesifori, says uh, the service will ensure an incident-free Easter. Three months ago, the Inspector General of Police and members of his administration paid a working visit to the Palm and Cromer Circle, visiting eight unions, met eight unions for the first time, and also extended his visit to the VIP transport yard. And following mutual discussion between the executives of the transport union and the IGP, the IGP pledged that before many days, we, his administration will introduce passengers spokes person project. Among other things, it means that every movement of the VIP buses to other parts of the country will have a spokesperson. And that spokesperson will be appointed by the passengers themselves. And the coordinating agency will be the VIP. And this is a prototype, an initiative being put forward to be extended to other transport organizations, movements, and unions. It's simply to stop road carnage and accidents on our roads. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the executives of the VIP, the media, this is the meeting lunch. Uh, well, General Manager of the VIP Bus Service, uh, Frimpong Mansu Adakabre, welcomed the initiative but was warning against interference. 2021, VIP transport has not recorded a single incident on the highway. We have also assured the general public that come this uh, Easter, uh, bearing in mind any unforeseen contingency, we expect that VIP will not record any incident. So, having to bring about a spokesperson on board the coach, this is a very laudable uh, program to the extent that we want our drivers and our drivers' con uh, mates to be well aware of their circumstances whilst they are in charge of the coach. And incidentally, technically, we would not uh, want our drivers to be distracted whilst they are in charge of the coach. But at the same time, VIP is a law-abiding company and VIP is conscious of safety of the public. Thereby, whenever anybody bought a VIP transport, we expect to travel with the person in humility and with respect. So whenever a bus moves and we elect a spokesperson, VIP is going to collaborate with the Ghana Police Service to ensure that amongst the passengers, a VIP buses, either is a 30-seater or a 50-seater, either of the two conf seating configuration, VIP would assist the Ghana Police Service for us all to agree amongst the 50 passengers or the 30 passengers, one to become the spokesperson for the day, and then we would assure the person to be on the seat number three. Well, tied to all of that, the, the police service is currently on some of the highways deploying personnel to enforce the initiative. Superintendent Alexander Obeng, Director in Charge of Public Affairs of the Service, joins us live with some uh, details. Supo, it's a pleasure having you. Now, which roads will benefit from this exercise? Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, we want to appreciate the support we are giving to this police, public, transport, owners uh, agreement project, right. uh, which has one of the options being uh, passenger spokesperson. And uh, uh, for the launch, your president was first, and we want to thank you 
and, and, and appreciate that. Having said that, it came at the right time because even the road safety situation in the country for the first quarter, uh, we have seen that there are marginal gains in terms of uh, compared with the same period last year, minimal crashes, a minimal impact in terms of mortality than fatality. Even in the area of motorcycles, they seem to be scaling down. And therefore, with this initiative among others, uh, and given our routine deployment during Easter, we have seen a significant uh, increase in terms of police presence and situation. Said that on the NC, uh, we begin to see an increase in deployment from right from Accra to to Nkoko and beyond, and also on the uh, at the epicenter where the paragliding is. Uh, is ongoing and is a adjoining uh, social interactive uh, and activities, including exhibitions and other ongoing. And uh, we've seen police officers deployed, some on motorbikes, some on patrol vehicles, some are static duty points, and even some that are, uh, cannot be seen because they are detectives among others, all the view that. Uh, uh, we will be there to deliver or are uh, delivering police traffic services and enforcement services and security services so that in the end, uh, in, in, when it has to do with movement, it will be free and safe, there will be minimal crashes, and where there is a need to ensure that we have uh, uh, that many that are uh, passing through uh, on the corridor, or those who are attending will also have a space to interact. And right. that's why we have a, one of the biggest common centers uh, around Paiso. And with uh, our meeting, uh, like uh, a police operational command in a uh, headquarters, uh, having uh, joined hands with the Eastern Regional Command and with the Director General Motor Traffic and Transport Department with all the motor traffic uh, officers uh, who are uh, patrolling uh, at strategic duty point, uh, what we call tensions and stretches uh, with motorbikes among others. We hope that together with other uh, areas of interest, particularly at the beach and all others that normally expect uh, in unusual and increased. Uh, vehicular movement, uh, as well as uh, gathering, including uh, those other social gatherings that normally are promoted by chiefs and people of communities to take full advantage of uh, the citizens and residents who either to not be there, but because of the occasion of Easter, they make themselves available and participate in socio-economic development of communities. And mostly who also use the roads and all that. And they are always uh, expecting police service right. to ensure that they have safer communities, safer movement, and, and, and safer guardians. And so, right. uh, the, uh, the, uh, in Coco area, we are present on the corridors. We are there. And we hope that all others that are Either moving Star Force or Novo or ensure that uh, they also uh, respond to police requests in terms of directions as to what to do among others and right, comply right. with uh, that traffic plan. Just confirm for me, Supo, uh, how many police officers are you deploying for this exercise? Uh, I pray that you leave the numbers to us. But as I said, we are very active and proactive in terms of our deployment. Besides that, uh, like I said, you see a number of motorcycles uh, numbering about uh, uh, 28 uh, patrolling and sweeping between Accra all the way to Nkoko. Right. And within the vicinity, you see a lot of speed. With the patrol teams, you see as many as possible. And those who are at static place, uh, duty point, 
uh, I don't want to say innumerable, but they have enough to circulate to ensure that our presence will give assurance and our presence will ensure that people who have access to exercise their freedom of movement, interaction, and to participate right. in this festivity. Having said that, we are not only concentrating our effort in the eastern region and in particular on the NC and then Nkoko and TBA uh, and Obomin and Paris and other. We are also looking at other all the other 18 police uh, regions where uh, the uh, international and national occasion are being celebrated by Christians. And of course, we also recall that because of the uh, COVID impact, uh, our competitors who have uh, business uh, steps uh, along the Gulf of Guinea, uh, the, the coast in Accra, uh, all the way to Pepe Point and all the way to Aflao had uh, 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 a challenge because people were not congregating. Now uh, people are keeping and a cause of police presence to ensure that people uh, celebrate in immigration. And all these areas are born part of our government strategy. And so we have spread all over to ensure that while these uh, nucleus of uh, celebrations are also being taken care of. Right. It is also clear that mm. in our communities, our routine deployment to ensure that people who have gone out, our competitors and residents who have gone out there to celebrate Easter will not be caught by criminals who will also uh, come home and, and break in. We are also there and we call on the community members to ensure that when we are leaving homes, we try as much as possible to leave the electro security that will alert them again. Right. We also pray that any time there's any incident, people should quickly inform us on our hotline, uh, 191 and 18555, and also 0302-773-906 for quick response and assistance. All right. Uh, in, in respect of the passenger spokesperson initiative, uh, how are you guarding against it being compromised? I mean, in terms of the passengers, because in this instance, it's the passengers themselves who have to elect someone. Oh, I think that uh, already, you know, there's uh, ever, uh, we are coming from a situation where all of us are telling passengers to be bold. And passengers have been are becoming very bold, and national safety has also been encouraging things. And the transport operators who are front line are also involved. The drivers are being sensitized by the transport operators. Passengers are being admonished. All that is required is that among the passengers, one will be selected to occupy seat three beside the driver uh, at the near side. And that will uh, position him or her to always uh, uh, be particular about the posture. Uh, of the driver and any traffic behavior that may impact on safety and compromise and alert him uh, in a very civil manner and also inform uh, the, uh, his colleagues on board as to what is going on and that if the driver becomes aloof or irresponsive, then of course you will trigger 191, 18555 or compel the driver respectively to pull over at a police station by the abutting the road or any police uh, what do you call patrol team on the road for necessary action to be taken in order to abet right, right. preventable crashes uh, on our road. What's what's in this for the travelling public and the passengers keeping check on the driver? Uh, please come again, sir. I'm saying, what is in it for the traveling public and for uh, oh, think, the passengers? For the clarion objective of ensuring that the protection of vehicle occupant is the main objective of this strategy. I think that Ghanaians have got into it. All that is required is that there won't be any resistance from the transport of people or the driver. Otherwise, for passengers, it is passengers that you are rented. And therefore, we don't see any resistance on the part of an all that the, any passenger also expects any sort of uh, reward. But the reward is as to do with the safety 
and the fact that they will be also co-driving because they will make input in the way they want to ensure that the driver does not unlawfully overtake. He does not face some kind of car dangerously. He does not drive on mobile phones. He does not necessarily uh, talking and doing all manner of things, fidgeting and disrespecting uh, other motorists and all that. That eventually will endanger uh, other passengers and other road users. And in this light, uh, any other thing that uh, will be motivational alongside the SME will be communicated. Superintendent Obing, we're grateful uh, for your time with us uh, this morning. Uh, Superintendent Alexander Obing uh, there uh, giving us details about this operation. Well, in our next story, the Ghana National Fire Service has begun Operation Prevent Fires, Save Lives and Property campaign. The exercise is to avert the incidences of fire outbreaks during and after the Easter festivities. The safety campaign was launched early this week. Public Relations Officer of the Service, Assistant Chief Officer 1, Timothy Osafuefum, joins us live via Zoom for more on this campaign. Uh, Chief, good morning to you. Uh, thank you for joining us on Joy News Desk. Uh, do tell us more about this campaign and how exactly it's going to work. Thank you very much, my brother. Um, we launched this uh, safety campaign earlier this week and it's aimed at reducing fires that, uh, that can be controlled. Um, from our investigations of fires that occur in this country, many of them, about 65% of them, are preventable. <clears throat> so these are the fires that we intend to prevent them from occurring. And what we have put in place are the following. One is that all commanders are to stay at post within this uh, period of the festivities to personally supervise uh, the rollout of this uh, safety campaign. Mm. And so for the first time in the country, all regional, municipal, metropolitan, and district commanders are to stay at post. None of them is to move anywhere to ensure that this uh, campaign works effectively. Second is that we have repaired or broken down fire tenders um, and put them uh, readiness for any eventuality. For areas that uh, the fire tenders could not be repaired as a result of unavailability of um, uh, spare parts, we have put in contingency measures to ensure that if there is any uh, incident in those places, we'll be able to quickly get there and give the necessary help. Then again, we already have market uh, campaign teams that are already in place. We have <clears throat> reinforced those campaign teams. And also we have formed task forces. And these task forces are to ensure the enforcement of fire uh, safety regulations in public uh, places of congregation. So we are also rolling out education in, in public places, including crusade grounds, churches, mosques, lorry parks, et cetera, et cetera, where people congregate at this particular point in time. Prevent fire, save lives and property. Uh, you've given us a global view of it, but how are you going to enforce it from the individual perspective? What are you going to do? Uh, how are you going to communicate this moving forward to get people on board? Yes, um, what we have done is to get in touch with the local assembly men. And it is for them to organize the people in their areas for us to educate them. We have also realized that in a typical residential area, you won't have people coming out to congregate right. together. And therefore, in those areas, we'll do what we call house-to-house -house, uh, education so okay. as to ensure that uh, these things, uh, unnecessary fires don't occur. All right. Uh, t tell us also about, let me just take you briefly back. You spoke about the fire tenders, the ones that were out of order that you had worked on to get back at, at post. In which areas specifically or which centers uh, ha, ha, can you point to? 
Uh, for for instance, in um, in Accra, we have put about five of them who, which were out of commission in uh, back to commission, and so we that is the specific example that I can give you. In Accra, we have about twenty six fire stations. Five of these fire tenders, six of these fire tenders, have been put back into commission, and so that is what we are doing across the length and breadth of the country. In terms of protecting uh, lives, property, and, and all of that, uh, we also know that it's not just about the fire tenders or your work. There's also the bit about the fire hydrants, or the water hydrants, I, I should say. Has there been any work on that, any collaborative work with the Ghana Water Company Limited to ensure that while your tenders are moving, they have adequate sources of water to douse fires? Yes, um... You know, the water situation in the country now is precarious. And that is one of the problems that we face as a service. So for now, what we have done is that if there should be any major incident anywhere, right. we quickly inform the Ghana Water Company to divert water to that area for us. And on our part, what we have done is that there is strict instructions to all uh, 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 commanders on the ground that the moment you get to an incident scene, if you cannot handle the situation on your own, quickly request for assistance so that it wouldn't be like your water gets exhausted before you call for assistance. Immediately you get to the incident scene, make a quick assessment of the situation, and then request for assistance. In as much as we have also put this in place, we have also put back all our, our water tankers in order. And we are in collaboration with other uh, organizations that can support us with their water tankers. So these, right. all these uh, 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 plans have been put in place. ACF Wafum, we are grateful that you made the time to uh, share these thoughts with us this morning. ACF Wafum is the PRO of the Ghana National Fire Service. Let's stay on the trajectory of Easter. Have hope of great times soon. That's according to President Akufuado, who is giving assurances that government is working hard to overcome Ghana's economic challenges. The country is currently experiencing a surge in inflation, with the Ghana Statistical Service pegging the figures at a record 19.4% as of March 2020. However, in his televised Easter message, the president is urging Ghanaians to have hope of better times ahead. In the face of the current difficulties confronting our nation, I admonish all of us to be inspired and guided by this promise of salvation. I ask respectfully, all of you, to continue to have hope of great times soon for our country. The government is working hard to restore our nation back onto the path of progress and prosperity, a path on which our nation was charting before the onset of COVID-19, whose negative consequences have been further exacerbated by the effects of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. All these difficulties notwithstanding, I'm confident that with creativity, enterprise, hard work, perseverance and unity, we, the Ghanaian people, shall overcome for our future is bright. Well, meanwhile, as Ghanaians observe the Easter festivities, the president is reminding Ghanaians about the need to adhere to the COVID-19 protocols. Yes, Easter will be the first in three years that we're going to have the opportunity to celebrate fully following the lifting of virtually all the restrictions government imposed to help win the fight against COVID-19. Our infection rate is low, with only 32 active cases recorded as of Monday, 11th April. There are no critical or severe cases, and our treatment centers are empty. I appeal to each and every one of you 
notwithstanding the lifting of the restrictions and the good news about infections, to continue to live responsibly and safely so we can all play our part in building Mother Ghana. Well, following uh, that address, we take a break, but we bring you Tech Talk when we return. Time now for Tech uh, Talk, and Kobe Spike here in Chroma is here. WhatsApp's new communities uh, tab has created a way for admins to message thousands. Let's get into that. There's also the bit about SpaceX uh, just launching uh, how to pay customers to the ISS. Here's everything you need uh, to know. But let's let's get on those two before we get into more on a certain Elon Musk and how he's shaking <laughs> the tech scene. Yeah. So on those first two issues, community, WhatsApp yes. communities? WhatsApp communities. So WhatsApp groups have become a nuisance for people like me mm. and a difficulty for admins who have to admit. It's a nuisance it. for us all. I'm in like a thousand groups and they are constantly dropping stuff. Every day. Like I have over 6,000 unread messages. Can you believe that? So imagine, and I'm admins for a lot of groups. And sometimes I have to send a message to one group and another group and all the other groups. And WhatsApp is introducing a, a feature that basically allows you to, as an admin, to administer multiple groups under a community. So let's say okay. in multimedia, I belong to our Dome FM group. Join it's a multimedia join group. FM. So you have the multimedia group community mm. and we have the subgroups under it. So the administrators who administer like multiple of these groups can now have tools to allow them to basically send bulk messages to mm. all the subgroups at once okay. and then control all the subgroups under the community. But the, the advantage is for privacy reasons, um, subgroups cannot communicate with other groups. And if I don't... So the I, subgroups still remain distinct yes, in a way. Remain, yes. So okay. it's like... A, a subgroup under a bigger group. Mm. So, you know, you, you know the what would the, be the best example? It's like those dolls, those Russian dolls that you ah, take out so of, you pick one. You can pick like seven out of out, out of one big doll. Okay. So you have that big bowl, the community, and then you have the subgroups in there. Um, they're testing it. Some other users are trying out the features to see and then giving WhatsApp feedback so they can improve it. We're hoping that. You know, it has some added features that allow us to control the talkatives in the groups. You know? Control the talkatives. And, and the non-talkatives. You should see those. Well, what, what do you mean by long talkatives? The observers. Kick them out. Masa, we are not in the classroom where they double punishment and they did yes, it there for. Kick them out. Why are you not talking? At the end of the year, you should, you should purge them. Some of us will not talk much. Others will talk plenty. Much. You need the balance. Yes, much. It's understandable. <clears throat> some people don't send one message to in a group. They're, they're lurkers in the dark. They're, they're creeps. It's removed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so that is on WhatsApp. Yes, we'll see how that, that, that shapes out. But on the next one? If you had $55 million, <clears throat> what would you do? Go to space. Oh, yes, and that's what some people are actually doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're taking Go to a space. visit to the international uh, uh, but, space but, but, but let me let, just do this damage control here. $55 oh, you said million. It. You said you go, go to space. Go to space, me. <laughs> you said yeah. it. You'll go to space. For where? And whoever's going to give Ben $55 million, it's been said on record that he wants to go to space. Like the person you go pay to, I will go claim the money. We didn't go pay him straight to space. <laughs> we go to the space. Just like these millionaires who think that they've had enough of Earth, mm. and they would like to see what yeah. outside of Earth yeah. looks like. So, I'm sorry about the challenge. <laughs> yeah. hey. Ten day tour, tour the ISS, you know, and they're going to... That's the International Space, space Center. Station. Oh, yes. Station, yeah. Yes. Station going to space. Center. Going to experience weightlessness, brushing your teeth in space, yeah. taking a... Yeah, <laughs> and all of that for 55 million. 55, and then a return trip, you come back. It's not one way ticket. You come back, you know, so that, that's... Give me the money. Guess who they're I can do so many things with guess that. Guess who they're paying money to. Oh, Elon Musk now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what he wants to do with that money? You know, of all, how many were they who went to 10? So there's four for mm -hmm. now, for starters, right. there's four. Mm -hmm. So 55 million each. So that's 110 so, so, million per pair. So 220 million per trip. So 220 million dollars in his coffers. Yes. And then he's thinking of, you know, purchasing Twitter. Yeah. For 43 billion at $5, $54.20 per share. Okay. So. In this instance, we're talking about 50 million. But in that instance, we are talking about some 43, 43 billion. billion. So it's quite a bit of money. But the man is worth 273 billion. Yeah, almost 300 billion. I mean, I mean come on. You got 273 billion. What's 
43 billion to you. And it's, it's, it's money, though. To, to, to Elon Musk? If, if you looked at it, if you look at Dangote's wealth, uh, the top 10 mm -hmm. in, our, you know, yeah, in, in our, Africa. In our region. Charlie. It's a lot of money. It's a huge and bit of money. Hey, do you know how huge 1 billion, even 1 million? I can't fathom it. I don't want to because I I'll probably... But someone will be sitting somewhere and say, hey, look at these people, broke man talk. <laughs> you know, oh, we'll get there. I mean, Elon Musk is in my space, the tech space. Tech bros, we're making all the difference right now. Right. You're looking at the next billionaire, you know. Every tech person is a, is a you know, prospective billionaire, and I'm one of them. So right now, y'all should be taking my autograph. I am associating with you here. Yes. And hoping that someday you'll remember that we these. had the... For $55 million. I'll give you the money. <laughs> but Elon Musk says he wants to buy Twitter. Uh, we, we also know that NFT of uh, Jack Dorsey's... Um, okay, so it has to do with Jack Dorsey's first tweet. Tweet, yes. And he someone was, bought it for how much? $6.9 million as an NFT. $6.9 so, million. Dollars. Essentially a screenshot of Jack Dorsey's first tweet, just setting up my Twitter. And Twitter was written in TWTTR. And someone bought it for six nine million, six point nine million dollars. Was this person hoping to make some gains on the back of this? Like you know, the, the first mover advantage, them things yes. you, he you felt purchase. That it's going to be a collectible, like a Mona Lisa, as he's mm. likened it to. Not like. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a very you know expensive piece of art. What is expensive about that? It's Jack Dorsey's first tweet. It's Twitter, and it's the first one. You could have screenshot that, and you know. And he tried to sell it, and he's not even making ten thousand dollars. Nobody's so six point nine million. For... And he said he was looking for twenty million, so he would donate fifty percent of the proceeds to charity. But uh, unfortunately, nobody yeah, make the profits and then milk the system and yeah, and then you know, but, be, be the taxes. But there's there's such a thing as bad investments. I this guess is this is one. one of them. You know. And, I mean, I'm sure the, our pallbearers must be having a laugh because they sold oh, yeah, their $1 like, million. Dollars. Oh, yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because people have been bashing them for, you know, sending 250000 to Ukraine and all of that. I hear, do clarify for me, I hear there's a connection that the person who organized this exactly. is actually from Ukraine. Yes. And there were some, so it is not that out of their own they no. would have immediately gone. Because I told There were circumstances. There's no, uh, no, there's no way. The knowledge of NFTs in Ghana is quite limited. So right. it had to take someone right. who knew the space, understood it, and knew how to position them rightly to get this done. Mm -hmm. And then say, hey, I can help you get this, but in return, this is what you do. I think yeah. fair is fair. Fair is fair. I you mean, get three-fourths, I get yeah. a quarter for my people in Ukraine. Makes all so they sense. pocket 750k. Make 750 by, how, how many are they? They are like four? Yeah, four, yeah. Even Masa. if they decide to donate 100,000 and mm. 150,000 to charity in Ghana, I'm just saying they still have like, you know, 600,000 to divide amongst themselves. And that's 150 grand each. That's, that's cool money. money. Let's wrap on the police, you know, thinking yeah. they are bringing, you know, conducting an arrest. Reminds me of that song by Chameleon Air. <laughs> You know the song. I, I, I'll not go there because of the Trying wedding. But riding. Yeah, yeah, catch yeah, me riding. I, I and they caught a, what? An autonomous vehicle. Self-driving vehicle. Self-driving vehicle. So Charlie, the police do yawa. Well, it was driving with the headlights off. They I mean, do yawa, robot. big yawa. And they pulled over the car. You should see the video. It's very interesting. And the guy walks to the side. Imagine Ghana police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you. Masa, so, ah, we'll be anti car. <laughs> so ask, why is your light off? Where's your, fire? Where's your license? Where's your, where's your license? Where's your triangle? Ask the car. Ask the car. It's like, talk to the hand. You know, and these cars are fitted with cameras and microphones and everything, so and radar systems, so they can see exactly where they're going. So it doesn't need the headlights, but I mean, ideally, you should have your headlights on Shall so we? people can see. Imagine in Ghana, where not in Ghana, headlights. but if I were in some other part of the world, this is something I would use to prank. You know? Yeah, and so they pulled over, and the, the car actually stopped because they heard the sirens and yeah. they saw the flashing yeah. lights, and it's been programmed. And when you see these things, stop. So it stopped. And when the policeman came to it and realized no one, it's, the policeman started going back and the car realized that, okay, we're done here. It started to move and the policeman was like, hey, hey, hey. So it pulled over again in a safe spot. That's actually very, very good programming. It pulled over in a very safe spot. Charlie. To attend to the policeman. When, when we shall get there, that one, I don't know. Let's not hazard a guess. But thanks so much you for coming to me. driving car to Makwala. It go shut down. <laughs> <laughs> it don't go sit up. We go show them see. Error, error, error. System will <laughs> right. <laughs> so Tech Talk uh, with Kobe Spikey in Krumah. Uh, we take a break now and return with business.
Welcome to Business on Joy News Desk. Uh, now, government is taking steps to increase the state's interest in some mining, oil and gas concessions that have been abandoned by foreign entities. The, the move is part of measures to ensure that the country does not lose out on many opportunities in the extractive sector. Deputy Minister of Finance John Kuma told Joy Business that progress is being made to ensure that the country earns more from this sector. Here is a report on that. Speaking after launching the Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative Report for 2019, the Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma said the mining, oil and gas sector initiatives undertaken by government will yield some results. Many stakeholders have bemoaned the low rate of revenue from the extractive sector in the past decades, although commodities prices have seen a significant increase, a situation government has begun steps to address in order to enhance revenue mobilization. Uh, as has been done every year, and these recommendations will be taken on board to influence policy direction and to help improve transparency in the extractive sector. It's, it's part of government policy to deliberately increase our stakes in, in, in some of these mining and uh, oil and gas sector companies. And GNPC, if you watch this year, has also taken steps to increase our uh, uh, interest in controlling interest in some of these uh, blocks, especially where uh, foreign companies are seeking to exit from the Ghana market. Um, government is taking advantage to increase our shareholding in, in, in some of these companies. The Deputy Minister for Energy, Dr. Amin Adam, disclosed that after the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation increased its stake in the Jubilee field, it has further made progress with negotiations to increase the interests of the state in Aka AGM energy blocks. As a small producing country, we in Ghana are also taking measures to increase our stake in producing fuels to generate more revenue for the state and to support GMPC's operations. In this wise, ladies and gentlemen, GMPC has successfully increased its stake in the Jubilee Fields by 7% whilst negotiating to increase our shares in the Eka Energy and AGM blocks. As we increase our commercial interest, ladies and gentlemen, the demand for transparency and accountability also will increase. Staying on the subject, the oil and gas industry in Ghana may in the coming years record a higher number of local participation. More Ghanaian students and researchers pursuing geophysical sciences and engineering are set to receive an in-depth technical know-how in oil and gas exploration. Two geophysical software companies, Geosoftware and DGB Earth Science, are assisting at the Department of Physics at the KNUST to train students and researchers. We have more in this report. Local participation in the oil and gas industry still remains an elusive subject in a government spectacle. Despite the legislative instruments governing the subject, providing locals with the expertise for the industry is a daunting challenge. Professor Akwesi Echampo is an associate professor of geophysics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. If you look at our gas, um, oil and gas program, there's a local component, local content, where those industries are supposed to employ their needs. But those people need to be trained well in order to be able to fit, to be able to compete. The fact that there's a local component doesn't mean that anybody at all can be employed. Over the past decade, students resort to industrial training prior to the recruitment applied to the management describes as worrying. Due to the lack of teaching software, graduates are only equipped with the needed skills by the oil and gas companies. You see, if you are to send students somewhere, you are limited as per even the number of students who can be sent elsewhere to be trained. But if you have the software here and you can train them here, then that limitation is no longer there. With the three softwares donated by the DGB Earth Science and Geo Software companies, students will be trained comprehensively for oil and gas industry. The software will also aid researchers to expand the knowledge base in petroleum exploration in Ghana. Dr. Cyril Boateng is a lecturer at the Department of Physics KNUSD. 
The DGBF Sciences uh, is donating open detect seismic interpretation software. So that's used for um, the data we take for finding oil and gas. It's called seismic data. All right. So they are donating that software so that we can interpret the data that we get. All right. And then the second company, Hamson uh, Joe Software, they are donating two components: Hamson Russell and then um, uh, Powerlog. Those two are also for seismic interpretation, reservoir characterization. That just means that it, it helps us to understand what is under the ground, so that we can know where the oil is. Emmanuel Brad Kweku reporting. And on that educative seismic note, we wrap Joy News Desk for this holiday installment. My name is Benjamin Akakbo. Do stay with us. We bring you our next major bulletin at noon. Have a good day.